Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, The Black Accountant. It's your boy Mo. And if you haven't already done so, already done so you know the drill. Go ahead and like, comment, subscribe, and let me know in the comments of any kind of content you want to see going forward. And most importantly, don't forget to turn on notification bell so you get notified when I drop new videos. Um, so today's topic, I wanted to talk a little bit about criticism and um, particularly giving uh, criticism and also taking criticism and uh, whether or not that's something that should be encouraged. And I definitely do believe it should be because I think criticism is good under the right context or, um, yeah, pretty much under the right context. So I'm going to talk about it in sections. So number one, I want to talk about taking criticism first. And I think it kind of boils down to who it's coming from and whether or not it was warranted. Um, a lot of people today don't really say their opinions or their critiques or criticism. They save them to themselves when in public. Um, and will pretty much just release all that pent up aggression or these these critiques online. These um, keyboard warriors, everybody you know, has the ability now to hide behind a screen and um, not particularly show themselves when talking about it. So like it's kind of like say it with your chest, but with a mask on, <laughs> if you will. So I think you should take criticism from people who uh, who are close to you in your corner, who are looking out for your best interest. And this is something that I see a lot of us struggle with, um, myself included, of taking criticism because it always comes off as hate and we focus so much on the tone of the way that something was said, when it was said, and, um, and automatically take it very personally. When if criticism, if looked at under the right context, as in it being constructive criticism versus just hate, then I think it's something worthwhile and worth worth listening to. So, um, and that's where it comes down to intent. Like if my close friend is coming to me and critiquing something that's close to me or something that I'm doing, um, I may not initially believe it at first because I'll be like, okay, why are you coming at me like that? Why are you coming at me sideways? Um, but then I take a moment to step back and think, hey, is this, is this warranted? Why is this person telling me this? Um, and a lot of times when it's somebody that's close to you, they mostly mean well. It's not usually to insult you. Um, and it's not usually to put you down in any kind of way. Sometimes the phrasing may not be the best. Maybe the timing may not be the best, but it needs to be said. And I would say to stick to these people and keep them close to you because a lot of today's people, or a lot of today's friends and friendships rely heavily on being polite and guarded around others um, and consistently putting the feelings before the reality. And what I mean by that is never telling somebody what their flaws are, what their weaknesses are um, in a way that, that propels them or helps them. And I think that's actually lacking on the edge of somebody that's that claims to be close to you if they don't tell you um, the things that you don't want to hear, especially if you're really making a big mistake or if you're really um, headed in a wrong direction. You know, sometimes you need to be, when you're, when you're taking advice, it's kind of like, or taking criticisms, always remember that it has no real bearing on you. And what I mean by that is that you're an adult for the most part. Um, and for other people who are still not an adult, you know, you have your own mind. It doesn't define you. It doesn't necessarily mean that this person is 100% correct because it's all subjective. Criticisms are usually kind of subjective. So you can take it, process it a little bit, and think, hey, like I may be mad, sad, or whatever, or frustrated in the moment, but does this person have a point? Before you think about retaliating or automatically coming off defensive, it's like take a moment to marinate and think about it and be like, hey, is this is this something that I do? Is this something that's warranted before you respond? And I think that's like a more mature way of taking criticism because you're accepting the fact that you may have some kind of flaw. You're accepting the fact that you may be doing something that irritates or um, or affects the people around you that you may not be seeing and somebody's calling it out, especially when it's a friend of yours or a family member of yours they don't generally tend to say stuff just to say stuff. Uh, a lot of times we don't see how we affect other people around us outside of what's obvious. So when somebody does step up to you, I think it's better to give them that benefit of the doubt 
because this is somebody that cares about you. And that's very different from somebody that's just critiquing you online um, and it's not actually a real critique, it's just more so hate, you know, versus instead of somebody trying to help you improve yourself or get better at something, um, they're putting this out there to, to just to make you feel worse about yourself or feel bad about yourself. And oftentimes it comes with this idea of trying to feel morally superior, like stand on a high ground or um, a backhanded compliment, which is something that I see on social media a lot. Um, and they're just sort of like passive aggressive ways of putting you down. So I think when it comes down to that, taking the criticism, it's take everything that you hear from other people, whether it's advice or whether it's criticism with a grain of salt because it doesn't define you. You are literally your own person. You'll still make whatever decisions that you make. You're the person who has to live with consequences. So it's up to you to decide which portion of this do I want to take and how will I take it? So I'm just saying to be a little bit more wary um, and to be a little bit more accepting, like give people the benefit of the doubt instead of automatically assuming people are just attacking you. And then the other aspect of it is to give criticism. And a lot of people nowadays feel like they're so entitled to do that, like to give everybody criticism when in reality, these are just based off of your own opinions. A lot of our life experiences are simply that. They're shaped based on our life experiences. So whatever opinions that we hold are very subjective because that's what they're based on. Um, you can infer certain things just from knowledge and from watching other people and reading other people, but you don't really know um, other people's situations unless you've really gone through those. You can empathize, or sorry, you can sympathize, but you can't necessarily empathize um, unless you've gone through that experience. So when it comes to giving somebody criticism, especially if somebody is close to you, is understanding the way that they take information and the way that they handle these emotions. Um, so if I know somebody is really making a big decision that's, that's kind of gonna affect them in a negative way, I would step back and assess like, hey, I know this person pretty well. They're not very receptive to me giving them criticism or they're not very receptive to, um, to critique. So let me figure out how do I mold these words or um, put this message out there for this person in a way that they're willing to accept it. And chances are, if somebody doesn't take criticism from you, like they may be able to take it from somebody else. So you can nudge somebody else that you know, that a mutual friend even, or like a family member to talk to this person. So, cause you know, they're more likely to listen to them and um, have it passed on that way. You don't need to necessarily be the vessel. You don't need to be the person that's giving the critique. Um, and I think also it comes down to, is it warranted? Like, yeah. Um, and this is something that I see with a lot of people who are older, who want to give younger people advice like I was just mentioning, your advice is a lot of times based on your own lived experiences. But I think this is a big disconnect that we have between generations as well, where um, this generation has its own problems. That generation had its own problems. There is some overlap, but overall, you don't know what it's like to live as a youth in this time frame because you lived as a youth in a different time frame. So you're not really aware of the struggles of today's youth. In the same way in which, like even me, like being in my late 20s, um, I can't really sympathize as much, or sorry, empathize as much with teenagers because I don't know what it's like to live um, fully in a digital age. I, I came up between two different ages um, of technology and just playing outside. So I can sympathize in terms of like, I can be like, okay, logically speaking, I can see what some of your issues might be, but I'm not really gonna get that because that's not something that I grew up in. So when it comes time to me to give somebody critique or give somebody um, some kind of criticism, it's simply based off of where do I see this logically going? What have I seen before? Is this something, a pattern that I'm familiar with? And then if I know this is something that that person's not gonna be receptive to from me, I will, um, I'll try to see if somebody else can word that message for me. And if there is nobody else, this is very important. You need to be willing to be the bad guy at times. Um, you can't go about life consistently pleasing everybody and pleasing everyone in your circle. You have to be willing to make them mad at you sometimes. Um, be willing to to hurt somebody's feelings if you know it's for the greater good. Um, and that's something I think a lot of us today are not willing to do because 
a lot of our relationships are very much so built on kindness and like I had mentioned in a previous video, false kindness of just trying to maintain peace. Um, but you're not really being a good friend or being a good family member if you don't tell somebody like, um, or tell somebody, um, what am I trying to say? If you don't give somebody advice on something that you know is going to harm them because you already know what that consequence is going to be. Um, you owe it to them to tell them. So that's all I really had for today's video. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.